So my name is David LeBlanc. I'm a U3 cultural studies student. I'm Sarah. I'm U2 cultural studies major and Russian literature minor. I'm Kelly Richmond. I am a U3 drama theater honors major, also a psych major on the side. So my name is Cody Lieberman. I'm a, I'm a U4 uh, cultural studies major, world cinema minor, but I am also a former um, theater studies major. It's the theater actor. Yeah, for it's sure. definitely the theater actor. Think of it this way, the director is sitting there coaching the film actor 85% of the time. You know when the film actor has a lot of freedom? In rehearsal. After that, they don't have any freedom. They are basically told what to do unless they have a nice director that actually cares. No, I do agree that like a film is a director's medium, but I wouldn't put it past the director to like give an actor that freedom. Also, what the piece demands too, yeah. because it might have a very well developed character already, and the actor could take that further in some cases, but in others, and this applies for both, just to be more specific. Could could you also say that because film is a mass medium, um, a film allows people to see your work more, so that is its own form of agency. At the same time, you always hear with certain like actors who are well versed between theater and film, you know, giving their best performances more often in theater than in film. And I guess that could just be because you're there. Because and if you're a theater actor, you're like, um, the character you've developed, you have that like two and a half hour period to like solidly mm -hmm. be in that embodiment for the whole time or like almost the whole time. And then if you're a film actor and you're doing only like a, whatever it is, like a five minute scene, and then you have to repeat that again and again and again, yeah. that's going to change I think it's going to change fundamentally what the character is that you've developed. Like, yeah. What's subtle in theater would be over the top in okay. so yeah. Freud, Laura Mulvey, and Brecht. Brecht. Okay. And Mary Mulvey, fuck Freud, and oh. kill Brecht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would... Well, no, I, I want to like spend time... Can you... Can we have like... Can I fuck Freud and then like have pillow talk? Because <laughs> I need to like, you know, talk, need to talk about it. But I would marry Mulvey probably. And yeah, probably kill Brecht. Yeah, I guess Freud would be fun in terms of just anything sexual because <laughs> his, his sort of, you know, implications with all of that. I feel like he'd be like really boring in bed. He probably would be. Well, what? Yeah, Which is like, why oh. you, with this whole scenario, I feel like anything goes doesn't boring. mean you can't have other people involved with that aspect. Oh, so could we have a threesome? Perhaps you can. More a foursome? Just an orgy. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I do think it's true, because in the way that, like, for example, in theater, uh, an actor would um, talk to the audience or have a soliloquy, mm -hmm. they, it's kind of embodied in the performance and film when they are in close-up, and you get that level of detail of the, like, the subtle facial, like, emotions that you don't necessarily get in theater. An empathetic response being when you feel some form of affect, emotion. That has been transmitted. That has been transmitted from the performance, and so, and you are able to read what, like, is going on in your body as what you assume is going on in the character's body. Um, and I think that the medium of transmitting that is stronger through a, being alive like a live performance and a, a bit of an aura from them being physically there and yeah. that's where that sort of like saying of stage presence comes in then. i also think there's a there's a complication in this where it's like what is the emotional understanding and like what is the to me like what is the benefit of the close-up as i guess you can more if you're like the director you can more genuinely like maybe communicate exactly what you want like if you want to show that someone, for example, is like really torn, like they really want to do something but they're not doing it, so they're sad, they're happy, and like those like that type of like really crazy complex emotion. Mm -hmm. I think maybe then you can have the close up, the, the the that's when detail of the face might be more communicative. But again, that kind of close up in the theater is a, it's it's a part of the production, whereas a close up in film is a shot. You know what I mean? And that like the context is way more important than the content of the close-up 
And I mean, we've all learned this in intro to film or intro to performance maybe, but like the Kuleshov effect, where if you have a close up of a man's face, whatever you put after that shot yeah, will cool. inform how the audience responds to the face. Versus strong content in so the close up okay. trumps like what could be done in theater. For sure. And I would also say that as well with what you're bringing up is that with the right sort of intentions and you know understanding of editing, film can in some ways transmit a more powerful response with the close up, right. depending on how they're using it. But then, but they still question, require those yeah, other shots because if thing. we're solely looking at the close up, the shot of the close up, anything. exactly. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can experiment so much with space, right? Yes. Like in theater, I guess you can experiment with the performance and the set, whereas in film you can experiment with the apparatus. You know, you can do interesting things with the camera in post-production. That you, There is a lot of room to experiment with the apparatus in film in a way that you can't in theater. But that's, it's just a different kind of experimenting. Yeah. yeah. Watching a recorded version of a play is like watching an IMAX film on your iPhone. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Like half of the experience is well, that's it. contingent on you being in that location experiencing. And I think what happening. you're also getting at too is that with the theater, it's very much encapsulating what real life does where, you know, you've got this moment and it's gone. And you can't rewind and you can't go back, regardless of how unique it may have been or off book. Or yeah. With theater, you have the potential of experimenting with the moment, mm -hmm. whereas in film, you have a different potential of experimenting with the medium. It's also a different temporality. Yes, I exactly. Also, I just want to like emphasize, though, that like with theater, even no matter what you define theater as, like you still can experiment with the medium to the extent of like audience participation yeah. and like... Yes, all the tech stuff. So it's like, I, I think, I don't think there's a, there's no absolute bar. <laughs> yeah. we, can't, we can't be like, oh, you can experiment this much with film and like this much or this much with the No, I think that sure. both are only limited by the imaginations of those people who are trying to push their limits. Yeah. But really at the end of the day, it's the quality of nowness that you get with so could theater. you say that like fundamentally the only difference between theater and film is that there's a device that records it? Yes. <laughs> so I really enjoy some of Tarantino's films. I would kill him because he would be so annoying in bed and really annoying Seriously. to be married to. <laughs> yeah. I would, I guess, fuck Aristophanes and marry Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I think I'd probably do the same thing. I would kill Aristophanes with pleasure <laughs> and I would marry Oscar Wilde and be so happy and then I would fuck Quentin Tarantino. I also think that would be good to just say you've done it. I mean I'm a big Tarantino fan but I wouldn't marry him and if I would kill him it would be in a really Tarantino way and yeah Oscar why not I'll marry him.